Hey man, have you ever wanted to make your plugins move with the music? Like when the chorus hits, the vocals get a little bit brighter or the reverb tail gets a little bit longer in certain sections just to emphasize that emotion and keep the song evolving over time? Well, all of that can be done with plugin automation. And today I'm gonna show you how you can automate every single parameter inside a plugin with Pro Tools and it's pretty easy to do. I'll show you why you want to use plugin automation and how, and if you stick around, I'll even show you a little trick that I use so that I don't got to worry about automation at all and still keep my mix evolving over time. Let's check it out. So last week at Mixnick, which by the way was amazing if you missed it, we had a bunch of panels, master classes, whole bunch of engineers, music producers, artists, networking, collaborating. It was dope. Shout out to everybody that came through and made Mixnick special. But somebody walked up to me during Mixnick and said, yo, I know how to do volume automation and pan automation, but I was recently working on a mix that I wanted to actually create like a EQ sweep or a filter sweep or something like that. And I couldn't figure out how to make that change happen over time within the plugin. I was like, bro, did you not know you can automate plugins and Pro Tools? He was like, yo, can you make that your next video? So here we are. Here's my plugin automation video. So one of the main things that I would want to use automation for with plugins is making those changes happen over time. In this case, we'll use a really simple scenario like doing a filter sweep on the intro of this song. Let's listen to this song real quick. Um, but matter of fact, let's just go ahead and load up this plugin. I'm going to use Lo-Fi to create this. No, it's not a true filter, but it creates a filter-like effect when you modify the sample rate. And by the way, Lo-Fi is a stock Pro Tools plugin, one of my favorites, one of the most used plugins that I ever use, man. It's so great for so many things. But um, this plugin, modifying the sample rate control will allow me to create somewhat of a filter effect. Um, let me kind of show you all first. But... Before I jump into doing the effect, let me show y'all how easy it is to enable automation for your parameters inside of Pro Tools. So pretty much I would just go up to this auto button and this is on every single plugin. You go up to the auto section, you click this little button right here and every automatable parameter for this plugin will be listed right here. You can easily click it and hit add. And once it's added to this right column, it'll be ready for automation. Now, you know me, being a Pro Tools Ninja, I want to use a shortcut so we don't get involved in all that. Besides, take a look at this real quick. If I go to a, a more complex plugin like this Fat Filter Pro Q3 and hit this auto button, you see how many parameters there are, including bypass and everything else that can be automated. It's literally over a hundred some parameters in this plugin alone that can be automated. I don't want to have to scroll through that list and find the exact one that I'm looking for. So here's the shortcut. If you're on a Mac, you're going to use the three finger modifier and that's going to be control option command. You're going to hold all three of those keys down. If you're on a PC, it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be control the windows key and alt. All right. You hold all three of those down and you click on whatever parameter that you want to enable for automation. A little dialogue pops up and you hit, Hey, enable automation for sample rate. Once you click that, you'll see this little green stroke <laughs> glowing, this little green outer glow around that parameter, letting you know, hey, this parameter is ready and enabled for automation. But that's not the only step. We'll get to the next step in a minute. Once I do this, I'll probably want to practice my automation moves though first. Here's probably what it'll sound like. So I'll start off with the sample rate all the way down. Maybe not all the way down. I'll start off with the sample rate pretty low and then I'll work it up by the time that the music drops all the way in. So it'll be something like this. Right. So something like that will get the point across, right? Um, so now I think I'm ready to do it. I like that. I got my practice in. That's the move that I want to make. And by the way, automation in Pro Tools is simply recording the changes that you make 
in real time and then Pro Tools will play them back when you hit play. It's really that easy. So if you wanna change anything like a level or a pan or a parameter inside a plugin, you can use automation to record the movements that you make and then have Pro Tools do it back automatically. All right, so now that I got my parameters set and ready for automation, I need to go over to the track and actually enable that track to let it know, hey, I'm about to start recording some automation here. Before you do it, let me take you to another little step, man. You know I gotta be thorough. Go up to the window menu and open up the automation window. If you wanna be a Pro Tools Ninja, hit Command and Numeric 4. Inside this automation window, make sure that plugin automation is red, that it's enabled, that you can write to plugins. And once that is set, you'll be good to go from there. Now, here's the thing. When you have all of these different parameters enabled inside this automation window, if you use write mode, then as soon as you hit play, all of these different parameters, whether you change them or not, will be recorded. Like the state of them will be recorded and it'll just make stuff a little bit tricky to work with. If you want full Pro Tools automation tutorial, I'll leave a link for it down below in the description of this video. But also you can find a link for my Pro Tools user certification course where we go fully in depth to all of the menus and parameters and operations of Pro Tools to help make you a Pro Tools Ninja too. So. Make sure that that plugin enabled that the plugin is right enabled, and then we'll go over to the track, choose the automation mode selector, which defaults to read. I'm going to use touch mode. Matter of fact, I'm going to use latch mode because I want it to stay at the last position that I leave it at. Again, full course and full automation tutorials down in the description if you want to tap in with that. I'm going to hit play, and now just while the song is playing, I got my automation mode set. I have my a parameter enabled that I'm gonna automate. I'm just gonna start playing and I'm gonna do my little sweep and Pro Tools is gonna remember exactly what I did and play it back for me every time after that. Here we go. I need a bag of blue hunters. I want enough money and I'm running up on it. All right, now I made a little mistake during that automation and some things changed. So I'm gonna show you now how we can edit the automation and even draw in automation for cleaner, more precise automation inside of Pro Tools. So if you're happy with that, then that's fine. You can move on. Just go ahead and listen to it back. You see, my hands are off. The parameter is moving all by itself. Right, so that works well. But let's go ahead and put this into read mode. That way we don't accidentally record over the automation we already have. And I, then I'm from here, I'm gonna go to my track view selector. That's the little button right up under the solo and mutes here on your track to the left side in the edit window. And then we're gonna go down, if you see, now that effect that we have automated is now a new lane for us to view and edit. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose that sample rate and we can see this is the graph of that automation, how my sample rate went from low to high. Now I told y'all I made a mistake here where you see I kind of dipped out there a little bit. I can come in here and manually just simply grab and move these automation breakpoints. You can also delete them by holding the option key on Mac or Alt on a PC and delete any automation points that you don't like. Um, like in this case, um, since by the nature of the type of automation that I was doing, it, it literally snapped back to the starting position after I released the parameter. So we can just take a listen to that now. I need a bag of blue hunters. I want it up on it. I'm running up on it. I need a lot of pink fifties. I want it in plenty. I'm running to get it. Right. If I don't like that change, then I'm simply just going to grab that break point and either delete it or move it back. Just hold the option key, get rid of that, delete it. And the rest of the music stays unchanged after that. Again, I think that maybe this could have been a little bit better, a little cleaner. So let's go ahead and delete that automation altogether just by selecting those breakpoints, hitting delete. And we can actually use our pencil tool to draw in automation or just add breakpoints like I was telling you. So one way is to just go ahead and add two breakpoints. I'm just holding the command key and clicking twice on that line to add my, my breakpoints. As a matter of fact, and then boom, uh, I'm gonna bring this breakpoint up 
right about there, like that. And boom, I just created a nice line. Matter of fact, this one needs to come up too, huh? And boom, a nice linear change. Right. If I want it to be really linear, you can also just grab the freehand automation tool as well or any other other types of pencil tools and just literally draw in whatever kind of curve you imagine. All right. And you can see that the automation is responding. The plugin is responding as necessary. <laughs> that might be a little drastic for this. So I'm gonna just grab my line pencil tool and I'm gonna just draw a nice even line from the beginning all the way up into my drop. I need a bag of blue <laughs> yeah, man, and that works great. Automation, automating plugins is really great when you want your parameters to change over time, creating a gradual change in the music or vocals or whatever it is that you're working on. But if you have static changes that just kind of happen, they kind of go in and out or like a delay on one single word that don't necessarily need to be automated. You can create what we call throw tracks or simply just doing a technique that I call molting. Molting is what I, when I literally separate audio that's all on one track and I put a piece of it on a different track so that it can be processed differently without the need to do automation. Molting is very easy to do. And again, it works great and it's a great alternative when you don't need the changes to happen gradually over time versus just statically happening, going from this to this immediately, a molt, <laughs> molting out those tracks or literally splitting them up into multiple tracks so that you can process it differently works really well. We're going to go ahead and duplicate this track here, just the music, since we, that's what we're focusing on right now. Um, let's just bring down this soothe and I'll just add a new lo-fi so that it doesn't copy over with any other automation. Let's just say like in this particular section, grab my smart tool again. In this particular section, maybe I want to actually create another little lo-fi dip. In this case, all I did was select that part of the song. I separated it using the B key here and I'm gonna drag it down to the new track that I just made. And here I can just set a different parameter for just this section. And then we can have these static changes from section to section without using any automation. I need a bag of blues and a pack of pink. I feel like a gender reveal walking out the bank. I get money, baby, money, baby, money, baby. Money, baby, money, baby, money, baby. Right? And a lot of times, like, just to show you this example on a vocal, uh, I might want to have my delays go up, right? Right, that was a little drastic, but I just want y'all to hear, like, if I wanted that up on it to have a different delay or a louder delay. Right, automating would be one way, so let's play that back. Right, automating would be one way. Let's just undo that automation real quick. But molting is another way that I think is great. In this case, let's go ahead and bring those inserts down. And let's just put like a delay effect. Let's go with H delay. All right. Uh, and then uh, we'll just set this to uh, eighth note. Turn that analog sound off because that's nasty. And you know what? Let's just go ahead and slap a reverb on here too. We'll go with a D verb, bring that wetness down. This way I can create a nice little delay reverb. And this is what we would call like a throw track. Similar concept to doing automation. The only difference is I don't have to do the automation. This is a lot easier for me to say, hey, you know what? I want this. Uh, I'm literally just copying and bringing it down. I want that to be delayed different. I want that to be delayed different. And let's just say that, all right? And then when I play this back, these sections will have a different sound of effects without having to do any automation. I need a bag of blue hunters. I want it up on it. I'm running up on it. I need a lot of pink 50s. I want it in plenty. I'm running to get it. I need a bag of blues 
in a pack of ten. I feel like a gender reveal walking out the bank. <laughs> That's pretty dope. And again, you can literally hold down those three finger modifiers, control, option, command if you're on a Mac, and it's gonna be alt, control, and the Windows key if you're on a PC, and literally enable any and every parameter, including the bypass for automation. And once you enable a plugin for automation, the new lanes will be revealed. So if you wanna edit them or draw in your automation, you first must enable it first. Then you can go over to your track view selector and you see effects D, that D verb, I now have my pre-delay, my wet dry, and even the bypass all enabled. And I can go into these different automation lanes and either draw it in or do it in real time. So put it like this, if you're not using automation in your session, whether that be plug-in automation, volume automation, or setting up those static changes like I've shown you with the molts and the throw tracks, you're really leaving a lot of emotion and evolution of your mixes on the table. Automation is not just some technical thing we do, it's really storytelling and helping that story evolve over time, man. What is the craziest thing you've ever automated or seen somebody automate in a mix? I really wanna know. Give us some ideas, give us some more creative moments that we could steal from you down in the comments. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavyproaudio.com. Make sure you check out everything that we have to offer from courses, software, to hardware, and more at wavyproaudio.com. I'll holler at you, man. Be dope.